Hey everybody, I'm Tim Mooney with the Timothy Mooney Repertory Theater. It's Moliere's birthday week. He's gonna be 399. I'm celebrating by performing my one-man play, Moliere Then Thou, on Friday, January 15th. He was christened on January 15th, so we're left to guess at the exact date. You can catch it at 8 p.m. Central Time on Zoom with tickets available through calendly.com slash Tim Mooney Rep. I'll be back with more performances of Moliere Than Thou on Sunday and Monday, February 28th and March 1st. Also, Sunday, Monday, March 21st and 22nd, 2021. Sunday shows at facebook.com slash Tim Mooney Rep are available as pay whatever you want events, while Monday night shows are just $5 on Zoom. Tickets available via calendly.com slash Tim Mooney Rep. So today I'd like to do my first installment of a special explainer series, Shakespeare versus Moliere. It so happens that I've done a rather large amount of research into both Shakespeare and Moliere. I've done four one-man Shakespeare events, and I've adapted 17 Moliere plays into new rhymed English. So I've got some rather elaborate thoughts about the two of them, as far as their similarities, as well as their differences. And also some thoughts about which one I might like more than the other. Which brings me to my most asked question. Who's better, Shakespeare or Moliere? And I think that's just a testament to how very close these two great playwrights are regarded in the public mind. Let's look at how much they have in common. Each one is generally considered to be the greatest playwright in their given language. Moliere writing in French while Shakespeare wrote in English. The end of Shakespeare's life, 1616, precedes the birth of Moliere by just six years, 1622. Both playwrights reached the pinnacle of their careers in the age of what were perhaps the greatest monarchs of their era, Shakespeare working during Queen Elizabeth's time and Moliere working for King Louis XIV. The arts tend to flourish under powerful rulers, given the sense of stability a strong leader may lend, which probably nurtures creativity. Following Queen Elizabeth, Shakespeare's theater company was adopted by King James and was known as the King's Men. Likewise, Moliere's troupe was eventually adopted by King Louis, known as the Troupe du Roi, the Troupe of the King. Shakespeare lived to the age of 52. Moliere, 51. In the course of his life, Shakespeare wrote at least 38 plays, while most references put Moliere's output around 36, although perhaps half of that number were one acts or sketches, and much of his early output, the product of improvisation, was never written down. Both playwrights wrote dialogue in both prose and verse. Shakespeare is generally considered to have significantly developed the English language, inventing as many as 1,700 words. Of course, it's always possible that he may simply have been the first one to write down those words that were in use already, and he had the advantage of them appearing in a Shakespeare play to make them stick. But Shakespeare also combined words in such an inventive manner that they became stock phrases that are used over and over again. Thin air, fast and loose, tongue-tied, bag and baggage. Moliere is not particularly famous for inventing words, but he is such a beloved figure in French culture that quite often the French refer to their language as being la langue du Moliere, the language of Moliere. Both men were actors. We actually know almost nothing about Shakespeare's life. We know so little, in fact, that there has been an ongoing argument among those of us who care, as to whether Shakespeare was, indeed, the name of the person who actually wrote the plays that have been attributed to him. We are fairly sure that the man named Shakespeare did some acting and eventually became a partner in a couple of popular theaters and a man of significant wealth, but we don't really have the usual sort of receipts that we might find for an author of that time, such as evidence of owning any books. And those very few signatures we have in his handwriting, we don't have any actual manuscripts of the plays, were never spelled the same way twice. What's fascinating about this is that if Shakespeare was indeed the pen name of someone else who actually wrote these great plays, that would be yet another coincidence with Moliere. 
The writer we know as Molière was actually born Jean-Baptiste Poquillon. He was born the son of another, Jean Poquillon, who was a man of some significant position in the court, working as the valet du chambre ordinaire et tapissier du roi. Forgive my French. Which is a fancy way of saying that he was, more or less, upholsterer to the king. It's surprising for us to realize that working in the theater was not highly regarded as a profession, especially given that we already know just how celebrated these two great towers of literature would eventually become. They are as close as we get to theatrical nobility, and we assume that they've always been regarded as such. In fact, it was considered to be an extremely vulgar profession. And if one's parents might be an earl or a duke or perhaps upholsterer to the king, it would definitely reflect badly on the family back home, resulting in a severe downgrade in status, perhaps the equivalent of millions of dollars in family wealth. A writer might well take up a pen name, and Jean-Baptiste took on the name Molière. And given that this is such a well-known fact about Molière, makes me more ready to believe that the same thing might also be true of the writer we now know as Shakespeare. And so you can see why it's very easy for these two authors to begin to overlap in our imagination, each with a catalog that has survived them by hundreds of years, regarded as the best in their respective languages. But we did, in fact, title this essay Shakespeare versus Moliere, so you probably want to know a little more about what was different or better about one or the other. Shakespeare wrote with a much broader palette. He, or perhaps she, wrote tragedies, comedies, histories, and what we sometimes call problem plays, as well as epic poems and sonnets. He wrote with a rich vision of human character, and the characters he invented or adapted had a much more detailed, nuanced sense of being. We might well have a hard time, for instance, imagining the same actor playing Hamlet, Macbeth, Othello, and King Lear. Moliere, however, was the leading actor in his theater. His plays almost always revolve around the central character which he himself tended to play. Moliere knew in advance that he was writing to the talents of a charismatic and hilarious performer. It is easy to imagine particular roles in Moliere's plays being played by the same actors, given that Moliere wrote specifically with their talents in mind. Shakespeare was never famous for those roles that he played in his company. He probably never played leading parts, and we only have speculation to go on to suggest that he might have played the ghost of Hamlet's father, for instance. So while Moliere might not have been the better writer, he was almost certainly the better actor. And that talent is also reflected in the tone of his writing. There's a natural exuberance in those plays that is less evident in Shakespeare, whose plays are regarded every bit as literature as they are performance spectacles. Shakespeare modeled some of his work on the writings of the ancient Roman tragedian Seneca, who wrote plays seemingly meant for reading or recitation as much as for full performance. Moliere's company started out performing plays by authors such as Corneille, the great serious neoclassical author of their time. That venture failed, with Moliere getting thrown into debtor's prison at least twice. Their company proceeded to take to the road, perhaps one step ahead of the bill collector, performing through the south of France over some 13 years. While we know nothing about Shakespeare's education, we do know that Moliere enjoyed a significant advanced education studying under the philosopher Gassende alongside the actual, not fictitious, Cyrano de Bergerac in the same school that King Louis XIV would eventually attend. But when Moliere and his troop took to the road, they found themselves racing to meet the demands of a less serious kind of theater, performing outdoors, working to catch the attention of passers-by, using the tools of Commedia dell'arte, which featured broad, body, improvised, slapstick action, and stock characters, caricatures, which would greatly influence Moliere's later work. 
While Shakespeare clearly appeals to our love of nuance, poetry, subtlety, and individuality, Moliere appeals to our love of broad gesture, splashy, hilarious action, not so much with the richness of Shakespeare's poetry as with clever repartee or the occasional epigram. My favorite, we die only once and for such a long time. While Moliere wrote comedies mocking modern French society, Shakespeare's tales mostly depicted the far reaches of history and a broad swath of geography echoing issues of his contemporary England through metaphor. Many of his most important plays, such as his histories, Hamlet, Macbeth, and King Lear, touched on crucial issues of royal succession, the question of just who should inherit the throne. A looming issue in Queen Elizabeth's latter years, but one that could not be referenced directly on stage. Moliere wrote with the comic muse in the forefront of everything he did. The lead role of his plays, almost always the one that he himself was playing, was referenced in the title, The Misanthrope, The Doctor in Spite of Himself, The Imaginary Invalid, The Imaginary Cuckold, The Miser. These roles would often reference a syndrome or an obsession that Moliere's character would have, and that syndrome was always the great driver of the action. The miser loves money more than his children and wants to control his children to bring more money into the family in the form of dowries or inheritances. Yes, Moliere also touched extensively on the theme of inheritance, not so much regarding royal succession, but the more bourgeois issue of family wealth. That syndrome is also the central character's greatest flaw and becomes the source of their undoing, and the audience learns the very broad but usually hilarious lesson of avoiding such extremes. Moliere's work was not as beautiful as Shakespeare's, but it was often much funnier. I suspect he was a lot more fun at parties. If they were visual artists, Shakespeare was painting portraits, while Moliere was drawing caricatures or cartoons. Cartoons may be just as significant or world-changing or entertaining as portraits are, but they rarely receive the kind of awed, hushed admiration as their more sophisticated cousins. As such, both authors appeal to different audiences at different times of their lives. Moliere makes clear sense to audiences in their earlier years, perhaps their 20s and 30s, while Shakespeare grows on the viewer over time. Shakespeare strikes us as profound, and his best work captures the rich expression of deep and delicate thoughts. Moliere strikes us as clever, and the best of his dialogue is often captured in the clever epigram. In fact, let me leave you with one last Moliere epigram which might capture what he himself might say about this comparison between himself and Shakespeare. Life is a tragedy to those who feel and a comedy to those who think. So that's Shakespeare versus Moliere. Hopefully your understanding of this will increase your appreciation of these two amazing playwrights. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. I'll explore this a little deeper in the coming weeks with an explainer about classical audition monologues and which one you might want to choose when you go for that big audition. You can make sure that you don't miss that one by subscribing or ringing the bell below. You'll also want to tune in to catch Moliere Than Thou this Friday, January 15th on Moliere's birthday. And again, February 28th and March 1st and March 21st and 22nd. If you're watching this video after those dates, please swing by timmooneyrep.com for all the latest details of the performance schedule or to book an event for your school, theater, or conference in person or via the internet. Keep in mind, his 400th birthday, January 2022. I do these videos just about every week in advance of the coming shows. You can go back and see the first one that I did on Moliere's life here and another about the scandals surrounding the play Tartuffe here. You can also find a ton of videos about Shakespeare on my channel as well. We've also got a Patreon campaign if you'd like to support this work at patreon.com slash timmooneyrep. We have giveaways of lots of swag, like these books, for instance, and even drawings for free performances. And this and lots more goodies can be found at 
timmoneyrep.com. Thanks for watching. See you on the stage.